Hey guys, welcome to Life in Motion. I am here with Paralympic snowboarder and my season 18 Dancing with the Stars partner and dear friend, Amy Purdy. Um, we're here in the beautiful outdoors and we're basically catching up, so welcome. I was kind of in a place when I'm Dancing with the Stars where I wasn't really sure. I was kind of like, you know what? I just won, I've won five times. I feel like I've kind of done. And then they told me about, you know, there's this girl and she's gonna be the first, you know, uh, Paralympians be on the show. She's a double amputee. It just it got, actually got me excited because it's something that it just felt like such an amazing challenge, an amazing uh, opportunity to, to create something. But were you worried? I, of course I was. I was <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna she do. Had no legs, <laughs> and I gotta teach you how to dance. <laughs> I'm sure you had to have been. But it, but oh, honestly, it made me nervous. But it got me excited though. It really did. Yeah. And then Dancing with the Stars, how we met. Yes. What was that whole situation like? Like, how did you find out, and what was it like knowing that you're going to be doing Dancing with the Stars? So I, like, at first I didn't believe I was really doing it uh -huh. because I've had a lot of opportunities that come my way that don't pan out. So I just, and I was so focused on the Paralympic Games that I didn't believe I was doing it until you showed up to Russia, which I was like, oh my gosh, we're really doing this. Yes. And. Um, yeah, it was just, a, it was crazy because it overlapped with the Paralympic Games. I was so focused on that, that I just, um, yeah, like all of a sudden decided to take this crazy journey on and, and there you were. They're like, she's from Vegas. Okay. And like, but you're flying to Russia. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, what? Why are we going to Russia? And of course, yeah. the Paralympics were going on at the same time. Exact same time. We were in Sochi, in Russia, she was competing during the day and then yeah. she would dance with me during the evening. It was, it was insane. Yeah. I really had to like compartmentalize. When I was riding, I was mm -hmm. just focused on riding. When I was dancing, I was focused on dancing. Well, I'll never forget, I was working out in this gym while you were competing yeah. in the day and, and a song came on, um, Human, mm. by Christina Perry. And I, I actually honestly it started to well up yeah. because I thought this is such a perfect song for Amy in this wow. journey and, and I was trying to, I was thinking ahead, I was like, we have to dance to this. Yeah. This is so perfect. And remember, we only had half a mirror, so I couldn't see my feet. That's right. And That's that was right. the hardest thing. I mean, my feet, like, I can't feel my feet, right? Like, I sit a foot off the ground, so I don't really know what they're doing down there. And if there's no mirror to look. Yeah, you can't see. I, we can't see. So we had, we had like two or three short half days mm -hmm. to practice. Then. I competed, won my medal, jumped on an airplane, flew 24 hours, got off, and we were basically live. It was such like a, it was a crazy it was whirlwind, wasn't it? It was so wild. surreal. Like, it was surreal for me anyways, because I was in the Paralympic Games. Mm -hmm. It was the first time that I had done the Olympics and I'm in the Olympic Village, and that was so incredible. And then to know that this was like overlapping right on the back end was so exciting for me. I really, like even week four, I was still pinching myself like, Am I here? Am I mm -hmm. doing this? Yes, I'm here. I'm doing this. I'm in. <laughs> I'm going to lean on you real fast. Yeah, go ahead. I just need to adjust my foot. Okay, good. It was really fascinating for me to watch you come up with our dances and the choreography. Yeah. Like, really fascinating. You guys Not don't even know. I'm like, this is a mad scientist. <laughs> and the dance studio is his lab. He's just, really, you're kind of crazy. He's kind of crazy. I'm very crazy. <laughs> when I'm in the dance studio, I, I become like a little kid kind of I think I you know I speak differently I, I act differently and um, like ideas you like I swear you're like grabbing <laughs> ideas out of this guy yeah like uh, uh, like yeah. like it's just coming and if you don't like <laughs> grab it right then then it's gonna go I do that I have like these like idea stutters but I go <laughs> <laughs> I'm chasing it. I'm chasing it. <laughs> it's really weird. I didn't even know I did it until somebody pointed it out. It, it was amazing for me yeah. to watch you do your work come up with this piece of art I just in the moment, you know, you didn't show up and like teach me a dance. We figured we figured it out in the moment. What moment can you remember that was the most sort of special, um, you know, for your Dancing with the Stars experience? Like, what was the yeah. one that you was like, man, I'll never forget that moment? I am I mean, for sure the contemporary contemporary dance mm -hmm. um, that I did for my dad. Mm -hmm. So that was incredible. I came on the show thinking that I was going to do the cha-cha and learn how to salsa and it was just super lighthearted. and then all of a sudden we dove so deep into my story more than I had ever shared before. Knowing my dad would be there, knowing yeah. my family would be there, uh, it really, and I was hesitant at first. I think at first um, I didn't want to do it and you talked me into it because you're like this is, you know, this is important and, and, it, and it was. It was just so vulnerable for me that I, I, I wasn't quite ready to share it until we came up with this beautiful dance. And so to be able to share this moment with my dad and with my family and I could cry right now. I mean, really, it was, um, 
it was so much more than I ever, ever could have imagined for me and my family. I think when we talk about perspective, right, like what you're looking for is what, what you're looking with, right? It's like it's all about what you're seeing with your eyes, what you're seeing through this filter right. of, of your world and what you can create. And, and when I met Amy, it was amazing because, you know, a situation where people would kind of be like, you know, this, why this happened to me and, yeah. and you know, and my life is over mm -hmm. and, and this is it. Yeah, and so I, when I was going into the operating room to have my legs amputated, I was 19 years old, completely scared to death, had wow. no idea what my life was going to be like. And I think I just was trying to find some kind of control in like a very out of control mm -hmm. situation. Yeah. And so as I was being wheeled into the operating room, I gave myself three goals. And the first was that I wasn't going to feel sorry for myself because I wasn't a victim. I didn't want to act like a victim. I didn't want to be treated like a victim. So I would never feel sorry for myself. The second one was that I had never missed a season of snowboarding and I wasn't about to. So I was going to snowboard that year. Yeah. And the third one was that someday when I figure this out, I want to help other people. Mm -hmm. And um, and I've been able to accomplish that. And yeah. um, But I needed that. I needed that to pull me through. I yeah. needed to say, okay, what's next? Because I have no idea. I have no idea what's on the other side of that operating room. So for me, that kind of goal setting has been huge. So walk us through the moment, the, the time in your life when everything absolutely changed. So I was 19 years old. I was a massage therapist. I grew up in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And then like that, my life changed forever, literally overnight. Went to work feeling great. Mm -hmm. um, and halfway through the day, started to feel like I was maybe coming down with the flu because I was getting a little fatigued and mm -hmm. I got a headache. And I went home from work early, had a very slight temperature, 101. That's typical flu-like symptoms. Mm -hmm. But within 24 hours of that first flu symptom, I was in the hospital on life support, given less than a 2% chance of living. 2% chance. That's and um, it ended up being something called meningococcal meningitis, which I had never heard of before. This bacteria lives on your nose and your mouth, just like any other bacteria, like the flu or the cold, and that's how it spread as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, somebody could have sneezed on me, and maybe that's how I got it. For some reason, my body didn't fight it off. And um, over the course of two and a half months, I ended up losing my spleen, I lost my kidney function, I lost almost all the hearing in my left ear. And then due to the septic shock that my body went into, I ended up losing both my legs below the knees. Wow. So my life, I mean, it changed overnight and drastically. All I could focus on at that time was survival. I was fighting for my life. I was in a coma for a couple weeks. When I woke up, I knew that my feet were in trouble. My feet were purple. I had zero circulation. But I'll tell you what, my hands were just as bad as my feet. Really? Uh -huh. my, my fingertips were black, my hands were purple, and we thought for sure I was losing my hands more than my feet. Wow. You know, life is all about perspective because sure. when it turned around and all of a sudden I didn't lose my hands and I lost my feet, I thought, how lucky am I? I only lost my feet. I mean, just hearing that too, you're so right. I mean, to go through a situation where it's like life-changing and drastic, and then to, to turn around and to just create such a, 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 an amazing life that's filled with service and filled with just, you know, movement and action. Yeah. And, you know, we call this life in motion because yeah. I'm all about moving and being active and getting out there and living your life. And, Absolutely. And you, that's what you do. Yeah. You, you do it and you live it. You walk your talk. Absolutely. And I, to see that what you've done with, you know, adaptive action sports, um, has been incredible. And it's how, 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 long, how long have you had it now? My husband and I founded Adaptive Action Sports in 2005. And we wow. founded the organization because there weren't any resources for somebody like me with a physical disability who wanted to get involved in action sports. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of organizations helping with skiing or running or classic sports, but I was an action sport athlete and mm -hmm. there wasn't anything out there that could help me. And so um, kind of in my process of figuring out how to snowboard, how to skateboard, how to wakeboard, how to do these things with prosthetic legs, we decided to start the organization so that we could help other people do the yeah. same. Yeah. And it's grown from recreational, like just helping kids get on a snowboard for the first time, to training an elite group of snowboarders who um, are training for the US team and making the Paralympic Games. Awesome. And we just we actually just brought seven medals home for Team USA just within our organization. That's so, but, so leading back seven, to this. Seven Paralympic medals. I, this is amazing. I got chills right now because you you had set an intention, you set mm -hmm. a, a, a dream, you set a goal, you mm -hmm. set you had clarity that you wanted to serve others mm -hmm. and help others. 
and then here you are years later and you're helping, you know, bring home seven medals right. for Paralympic Games. Like, create all that. Momentum and... It's fantastic. You know, just being passionate about something, it, that's what drives you. The passion to figure it out, to find a way. There's a need and, 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 and I've learned so much in my life if I can give back in any way, mm. like that, that is so fulfilling for me. That's it. Because the secret to happiness is actually not taking, you know, and receiving, it's giving. Yeah. And and when you and we all have something to give. That's why I feel like it's so inspiring, you know, I think is it's not just inspiring because of how amazing your story is, but also inspiring others and myself to where there really is no limit. Right. There really is no limit except for the limit that we put on ourselves. And you're you're just a true testament to that. It's amazing. Thank you. That's why we're friends. I you love guys. It. We're good friends, girl. We're friends. Um, I don't know why I'd go into that weird voice when I get like, I'm like, yeah, girl, <laughs> all right, yeah. I'm like, I don't know what happens. By the way, speaking of just my dad, he was tea texting me last night. He's like, so glad to see you guys together again. I love your dad. <laughs> he loves me. Jarek. My dad loves Amy so much. He's like my BFF. <laughs> He's like, your dad hey, is... you, and, uh, you and Perk City today? Let's go <laughs> snowboarding. Yeah, I actually, I hung out with your dad on his birthday, randomly. What? In Park City. Good guy, that Bruce Huff. B. Huff. Love you, dad. <laughs> You're the dude. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing a shaka to you because, you know, what's happening right now? <laughs> if you just had one piece of advice, like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know, like, what, what, what would you yeah. say to somebody? There are no rules. Like, there's no rules to um, what we can or can't achieve or mm -hmm. what we can or cannot accomplish in life. And. Uh, we make those rules up ourselves. So like you can be anything you want to be at any time you want to be it. No matter what your circumstances are, if you work hard enough, if you're passionate enough, then almost anything's possible. Yeah. And uh, that's been my life. My life has been taking action, trying to figure it out. You don't know what you can do until you get in and do it. And I love what you said too, it's like taking the first step. It's yeah. sort of the idea of, um, and of course taking action. Yeah. Because um, I feel like that's always the hardest part. I know for me when I'm choreographing, or creating something, it's always that first step. It's always the right. first move it's, that I'm just like, like where do you start? Where do like I start? Like a blank piece of paper. I yeah. know, but once I get that first move, it just is like, it creates momentum and I can right. keep going and I'm moving and all of a sudden before you know it, boom, you've done it. And I feel yeah. like that's how it is with life in general. Yeah. It's always like, ah, I gotta wait and I'm not sure and, but just make the call, send the email, book the trip. Right. You know, book the dance lesson, book the, the yeah. skiing lesson, the snowboarding lesson, whatever it might be. Just take action like right now right. that's gonna move you in the direction to what you want to actually do and what you've been wanting yeah. to do for so long. I, I think when you go through something as serious as I've gone through where sure. you're very aware of your mortality, it, it, it makes you live on a different level. It makes everything that much more rich. Mm. It makes you that much more grateful for every little thing. Like, I'm healthy, today I'm healthy. Oh my gosh, I have everything I need to live the best life mm. possible. It's something that we could all learn, I think is to live in that state of gratitude and that state of, of waking up and be like, you know what, man, I, I'm I, I, one more day above ground. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's, this a, could it's, be a day. it's a good day. It's a good day. You know, you, you, you didn't want to focus on what you didn't have. You want to focus yeah. on what you did have. I, uh, I always said with losing my legs, like I rarely call myself an amputee. I actually, I don't like labels sure. at all. Yeah. Um, but I also wouldn't really say I lost my legs as much as I would say I have two prosthetic legs. Because for me, that was just enough of a shift to focus on what I have versus what I've lost. And that's and that's what I love about that is that that's just a language shift. But it's a question that I think we should all ask ourselves. You know, are you focusing on what you don't have, or are you mm -hmm. focusing on what you do have? Yeah. You know, saying like I don't have this, and it's like no, I have this. Yeah. I think that's that's an amazing yeah. shift. I think that we can all learn from too. I think it's amazing. Right. I didn't lose my legs. I have ten pairs of legs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that. These days. I love that. <laughs> but thank you so much again for just all your insight and for what you do yeah. and for what you stand for and and how you live and um, and showing all of us, you know, what's possible. Honestly, it's 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 incredible. So thank you so thank much. You. I appreciate it. Thank and you. thank you guys all for tuning in and watching. And if you have anything that you loved about today's uh, episode, please share it. Um, and comment below. And if there's anything that inspires you, please, I wanna know about it. And don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.